Last speaker today is Eric Carries. He is the director of cargo marketing of the Port of LA. The project is called Environmental Technology to reduce port-related air pollution and related health risks. This project includes clean truck program and other components such as the world's first hybrid tugboat. Oh. Thank you. Good. Uh, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> well, it's uh, very nice being here in Barcelona. It's only my second time in Barcelona. It's very nice. I didn't know this part of town existed. And uh, very nice to see all the interaction that is taking place here um, in Barcelona. So yeah, a quick uh, talk on uh, what we're doing at the Port of Los Angeles from an environmental point of view, uh, specifically environmental technology. Uh, we're doing stuff on the efficiency side as well, and I'll, I can touch on that in a minute. But if you're not familiar where the Port of Los Angeles is, uh, the, we are, of course, in Southern California, the West Coast. There are two port complexes uh, in Southern California. One is the Port of Long Beach, and one is the Port of Los Angeles. We are actually competing port authorities, but we collaborate very closely when it comes to issues of uh, security, environmental programs, and some infrastructure type projects. We handle 17.5 million TEUs, who are actually the only gateway complex in the, in the, in the top 10, the only non-Asia gateway in the top 10 in the world. We handle more or less 30, 35% of the total US containerized import trade. And so the impact of port operations to the surrounding community is significant. The state of California also uh, de treats diesel emissions as in a, um, an air toxic. And so whenever we do projects, we have to look at reducing health risk from port operations. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are also, from a topography point of view, we are also surrounded by mountains. So that means any type of emissions that are produced, they generally speaking stay within the region, which is most unfortunate. Uh, back in the 1500s, actually, when a Portuguese uh, explorer discovered the San Pedro Bay, he actually referred to it then in the 1500s already as Bahia de los Fumos, because you have a lot of forest fires and the smoke from forest fires still stuck around. So anyway, so we're still there. From an economic point of view, uh, the important numbers are one in nine jobs for Southern California are related to port activity, 2.8 million uh, jobs uh, nationwide. We touch every one of the 435 uh, congressional districts. So what goes on at the Port of LA has really uh, national, is of national significance. When, when I talk about port emissions today, <clears throat> You also, we also look at where port emissions can go in the future. So we've done a rather detailed economic analysis, even looking at what uh, Danielle was showing earlier, uh, port development projects along the U.S. East Coast and US Gulf, in the U.S. Gulf. We still believe that through the San Pedro Bay port complex, our volumes will double, if not triple. So we might hit the 35, 40 million TU volumes by the year 2040, and, and we are obviously preparing to deal with these uh, anticipated uh, growth of volume. So uh, between the two ports, as I said, we, we work uh, collaboratively on security and environmental programs. So between the two ports, LA and Long Beach, we established in 2006 what we refer to as the Clean Air Action Plan. And the Clean Air Action Plan is aimed at reducing emissions from five major sources uh, which are listed here. Uh, harbor craft, <coughs> on-road trucks, the regular trucks that are on the road, terminal equipment, and of course ocean-going vessels. And on the subject of ocean-going vessels, at the port of Los Angeles we were the very first port to actually connect ships to shore power, or in Europe you refer to it as onshore power, sometimes in the US called ironing, the official title actually in the international standard which we developed, started developing in 2006 is actually high voltage shore connection systems, that's what it is referred to. So this was the first ship to ever connect to shore power. What you will see on the photo is that there is a barge on the back side of it with a transformer on it. That was the first prototype if you will. Uh, as a result of what was designed or the result of basically the international standard 
uh, ships, that doesn't exist anymore. Ships basically receive the 6,600 volts that is provided from the shore and they do the transformation uh, on board the vessel. We purposely actually put that type of equipment on a flat rack container. You can see that because we wanted the shipping industry to realize that if you can put it, a transformer cable management system on a flat rack, you can also put it in a, in a container. And so if you wanted to minimize the impact from, a, from an investment point of view on the, on the shipping line side, you, could, uh, you can put it in a container whenever the vessel is deployed in a different trade route, at least recover part of that investment and place it on another vessel. So uh, we're very proud of this project. We spent, uh, uh, well, $5 million to outfit 17 of uh, Ch then China Shipping's vessels. We also have what we refer to a, a power cost neutrality component because we were the first folks uh, starting this program. So we wanted to make sure that for the shipping line that was using shore power, that the power that they paid for from the, from the shore would be the same as the self-generated power. So we actually have a, a power cost neutrality component associated with this. This, the shore power, plus, with Danielle spoke about uh, the number of trucks that we had, that, uh, the daily truck trips in Shanghai. Well, you may be surprised, the daily truck trips in Los Angeles and Long Beach related to port activity are exactly the same. We have 60,000 daily truck moves uh, taking place in Los Angeles and Long Beach. And one of our uh, programs as well, going back to 2008, as part of the Clean Air Action Plan was to roll out a clean trucks program. Basically, we, by way of our tariff, we banned trucks that were from 19, in 2008, we banned trucks that were from uh, age 1988. They, they couldn't enter the port anymore. And then later on, uh, in 2012, we actually banned the trucks that were the year model, only trucks that were year model 2007 and newer could enter uh, marine terminals. We have seven, uh, we have 12, container terminals in the San Pedro Bay, Los Angeles and Long Beach. Um, we didn't just tell folks, you know, uh, you can't come in anymore. We actually had a mechanism where there were fees paid. Those fees generated revenues to then actually help trucking companies to buy the newer trucks that needed to be used to service the port area. So between the clean trucks program Shore power, which in the meantime is a, a state requirement because we made the technology feasible in 2004. The state adopted a shore power rule in 2014 requiring container ships, cruise vessels, and um, reefer vessels to connect to shore power. So between those two main projects, uh, we've seen, and some terminal equipment improvements as well, we've seen some massive increases in, uh, in uh, reducing air pollution, while container volume actually during the same period of time uh, grew by 26%. So uh, the Cleaner Action Plan has seen a couple of updates, and we are now in the third update of the Cleaner Action Plan. We are still uh, focusing on the five major source categories, but you can also tell that the last bullet there is talking about efficiency. An efficiency improvement and certainly on the Los Angeles side, uh, much like many ports around the globe, major ports and smaller ports as well, uh, we are very focused on, the, on digitizing the supply chain. So we've invested $16 million so far on a project called the Port Optimizer that provides visibility to the supply chain so you can improve your planning and processing and movement of cargo to the terminal facilities. That is a project that currently we're only doing by ourselves, Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach, we hope will come online very soon on the efficiency side, the Port Optimizer project. You can look it up online. Um, the update was, a, was an extensive outreach, two years of work reaching out to all the various supply chain stakeholders, including the agencies. We have uh, the California Resources Board, we have the South Coast Air Quality Management District, uh, that participated with us in developing uh, the new Clean Air Action Plan. One of the major uh, developments out of the new Clean Air Action Plan is that we will require that all trucks that serve the port area will be zero emissions by 2035. All terminal equipment needs to be zero emissions by 2030. That is a very, very high goal. Um, 
but we are well on a path to achieve that, we feel. Um, for marine terminal operators, some of the concerns that they have sometimes is you know, life cycle of equipment and how to make that match life cycle versus the targets that we've put up, 2030 and 2035. So um, we also help the industry, right? So we set targets to reduce emissions, but we also help the industry by making funds available. The Clean Trucks Program Fund was one of them. The, um, as I mentioned, we spent $5 million on China shipping on outfitting vessels. We, uh, we also have, uh, from a, from, to demonstrate new technologies, we also have between the two ports the technology advancement program. Um, we've had uh, 40 projects so far that the technology advancement program funded. It's a million and a half dollars from our side and the same from Long Beach. Uh, the, pick, the one that you saw, the one that's shown actually is, a, is, is an, what we call an RTG, rubber tired gantry crane that traditionally is a diesel electric piece of equipment. Uh, we've uh, basically turned that into a hybrid RTG, reducing the diesel engine from 600 horsepower to 105 horsepower. Uh, it's significantly reducing the environmental impacts from that piece of equipment. For a marine terminal, it almost makes no sense for them anymore to buy a regular rubber tired gantry crane because the cost differential is minimal and they actually benefit from the fuel savings going with a, a hybrid type of equipment. We have 27 running around. Uh, very recently, October 2nd, uh, Taylor, which is one of the major top pick heavy duty uh, terminal equipment developers, uh, introduced with with a bit of uh, fanfare, I will say, because we're very proud of it, a zero emissions topic, which is used for your traditional delivery of containers to, to, um, uh, to trucks. Uh, many of these pieces of equipment are, are around. The nice thing, <clears throat> even in a technology advancement environment where we're looking to demonstrate things, Back in the day, I will say, we were working often with small startup type of companies and, and that works, but it's, it's harder uh, to, to actually really fully implement them because they're not really capitalized to the extent that, for instance, companies like Taylor and companies uh, like Toyota and Shell uh, have. So uh, this is another one of the projects. This is actually a California Air Resources Board funded project. It's $41 million to uh, have 10 hydrogen fuel cell trucks built by Toyota. It's a joint venture. Toyota, Kenworth, the, the truck manufacturer. Uh, the fuel cell te technology comes from Toyota and Shell. Uh, so those, this involves also the building of fueling stations, hydrogen fuel st uh, stations as well, and a couple of them in nearby. This will get us to a zero emissions environment. So for us, zero emissions is not necessarily always going the electrical route, you can get to zero emissions environment as well, uh, going to a hydrogen fuel cell technology, and there's a lot more attention more recently on, on, on that technology. So uh, we have uh, today, we are managing around $80 million of grant funding in total for a variety of uh, projects. We have 16, between LA and Long Beach, we have 16 zero emissions and near zero emissions, which. Uh, uh, type of projects near zero emissions can be LNG uh, fuel equipment. I'll, I'll just touch on a couple of them. We have a tier four tugboat retrofit, um, which is, uh, it almost sounds the movie, like the movie uh, Back to the Future, like it's a flux capacitor, but no, it's basically, they have a, an extensive catalytic, catalytic converter system on it. Uh, we, it's about a million dollar project. We are funding it for about $500,000. Uh, we are also working with a Canadian company, actually out of Montreal, Efenco, that have developed a, 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 a truck idling type uh, technology, but we're using this for uh, yard equipment, terminal equipment. Uh, that is a project that we are funding. It's 360,000 total. We're funding it by $180,000, fairly small. We have, uh, for us on the West Coast, the first LNG-powered vessel that will come online. They're brand new ships uh, built by Peisha Hawaii. They are um, <clears throat> uh, $430 million in purchase price. We are paying for the demonstration testing of uh, the emissions on, on the Peisha Hawaii vessels. And then the hybrid tugboat for Harley Marine 
is a, uh, a conversion to a diesel electric type of environment. Um, so uh, that's a $21 million project and we're helping for, with the cost to design this new uh, equipment. So uh, all in all, this is a quick sh rundown. Uh, I invite you to go to the website, Clean Air Action Plan. Uh, you can see all the details of the Clean Air Action Plan and all the, all the projects that we are working on. I will say that since 2005, as a port authority, we have spent close to $400 million on environmental programs. Um, so programs are not inexpensive, but uh, they are necessary. And we have been in a very good market position actually to also drive um, these types of what some people may consider ag aggressive. We like to think that they're progressive uh, programs. So I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll continue our program now onto our booth of Smart Ports right behind us. So please join us there. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Goodbye.